You can save 15% or more at Amazon when you pay with Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. Just go to purse.bogosity.tv. You can set your own discount. 5% gets you fastest delivery, or you can set it to 30% or more if you're not in a hurry. Purse makes it so easy to save money at Amazon by buying with crypto. Just go to purse.bogosity.tv and start saving now. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of October 6, 2019. The podcast that ducks down the alleyway looking for a new friend. This is your host, Shane Killian. Let's exporigate the news of the bogus. We'll start with a couple of stories on WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, and I'm sorry, but they're not good. Currently, Assange is being held at Belmarsh Prison in London in super maximum security even though he has never committed a violent act or anything that the US or the UK consider to be a crime to begin with. Chelsea Manning might have committed the crime, but the journalist a whistleblower has given the information to has never been held responsible before. Despite the fact that Assange has not officially been placed in solitary confinement and the prison has two gyms, a sports hall, and a fitness room, Assange has been let out of his cell at most for one hour a day. And according to his father, he isn't doing well. John Shipton has warned the press that Assange is suffering both mentally and physically. Just before receiving the Gavin McFadden Award on his son's behalf for the very journalism he's imprisoned for, he issued a statement saying that Assange is shaky and suffering from anxiety. He's also lost a lot of weight and, quote, is being subjected to every sort of torment. Assange was supposed to have been released on the 22nd of last month, but the judge denied his release, saying that he was still facing extradition and was a flight risk. Shipton said, quote, The only people who are breaking the law are the UK government and the Crown Prosecution Service. UN Special Rapporteur on Torture Niles Meltzer said after visiting Assange in May, quote, The evidence is overwhelming and clear. Mr. Assange has been deliberately exposed for a period of several years to progressively severe forms of cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment, the cumulative effects of which can only be described as psychological torture. In 20 years of work with victims of war, violence, and political persecution, I have never seen a group of democratic states ganging up to deliberately isolate, demonize, and abuse a single individual for such a long time and with so little regard for human dignity and the rule of law. The collective persecution of Julian Assange must end here and now. The second story just emphasizes the persecution Assange has faced. The Ecuadorian embassy that held him in exile hired security firm Undercover Global Limited to provide security to the embassy. It's now come out that Undercover was spying on the embassy, recording constant audio and video surveillance, and transmitting that to the CIA. Spain's national court has formally opened an investigation into the matter. Apparently, it goes all the way to the top, with the firm's owner David Morales making a deal with the CIA and ordering his employees to keep it a secret. They bugged the entire embassy, including the female toilets. In fact, the only room they didn't bug was the bedroom because there were no good hiding places and they were afraid the bugs would be discovered. They also tapped Assange's streaming system, giving U.S. officials real-time access to all of Assange's communications, including illegally spying on his legal discussions. I don't know about anyone else, but I'd never hire them for anything after this. Information about this probably came from a leak from an employee. You'd think they would have thought of that. If extradited to the U.S., Assange could face up to 175 years in prison. Here's hoping something changes for the better and soon. Ads are annoying, but ad blockers prevent publishers from making money. What if you could support your favorite websites, YouTube creators, Twitch streamers, social accounts, and many more ad-free and without paying anything, and even make some money yourself? It's not a pipe dream, it's airtime. Go to airtime.bogosity.tv and get the browser extension and you'll earn cryptocurrency for the sites you visit. And so will the publisher. This is not a crypto miner. You and the publisher will both get part of the reward from current miners of the BitTube cryptocurrency, with no middleman taking a cut. 
Even if the publisher hasn't signed up yet, his tube will be put into a dedicated wallet that he can claim upon sign up. You can also use your tube to tip publishers and even purchase products. Airtime monetizes users and publishers with no ads or crypto miners. Go to airtime.bogosity.tv and start making money now. Say, if you're tired of the promos in this podcast, well, the patrons got it early and with no ads or promos. Just go to patreon.bogosity.tv and donate at any level. Our second story is another one regarding Sci-Hub, the attempt to open scientific knowledge to the world that's been regarded as an illegal pirate bay for science, not by scientists who generally love it, but to academic publishers like Elsevier who see it as taking their profits, which exceed $2.4 billion per year. Three years ago, Elsevier took them to court and won millions of dollars in damages, but that didn't stop the site. It stayed online and grew bigger. Understand that not only are scientists not paid any royalties for the papers they publish, they usually need to use other papers in their research, and they find themselves hitting paywalls. Elsevier and other publishers sell subscriptions to universities, but they're so expensive that many institutions can't afford them. The University of California has requested that Elsevier make all of its research, which is funded by taxpayers, by the way, available to the public without cost. Elsevier said they would do that only if the authors of the papers paid extra publishing fees. By the way, scientists paying to have their papers published is majorly frowned upon. So the UC stopped its multi-million dollar subscription with Elsevier, and they're not the only ones. More and more institutions have either stopped or can't afford to start paying the fees. According to UC Berkeley economics professor Jeffrey Mackey Mason, quote, Make no mistake, the prices of scientific journals now are so high that not a single university in the U.S., not the University of California, not Harvard, no institution can afford to subscribe to them all. Publishing our scholarship behind a paywall deprives people of the access to and benefits of publicly funded research. That is terrible for society. Even in other countries such as Germany, Hungary, and Sweden, several universities have let their subscriptions expire. But every time that happens, the institution's researchers lose access to critical research. Enter Sci-Hub. As its founder, Alexander Elbakian, said back in 2015, quote, Everyone should have access to knowledge regardless of their income or affiliation, and that's absolutely legal. Also, the idea that knowledge can be a private property of some commercial company sounds absolutely weird to me. The site's statistics show that it's continuing to grow, and the biggest reason why seems to be UC and other major institutions canceling their subscriptions. Most of this research is taxpayer-funded, and at least morally should be made freely available to everyone. Moreover, Elsevier doesn't pay the researchers any of the profits it rakes in, and the peer reviewers are unpaid as well. Since Sci-Hub can apparently do the job for free, even after years of persecution from the government, it makes you wonder what the point of Elsevier's existence even is. If you're on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government censors. It's essential in this day and age, so go to vpn.bogosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world, and they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pagosity.tv. I never really understood what the point was supposed to be of that low-resolution camouflage the army started using a while back. I mean, were they really thinking there was a chance they'd have to hide out in a game of Super Mario Brothers? 
No one else liked it either, to the point where they have officially axed it. This past Tuesday, it was officially discontinued. The retro 8-bit pattern, known as Universal Camouflage Pattern, or UCP, was supposed to fit every environment, but soon became universally hated because it didn't fit any environment. So they will be going back to Operational Camouflage Pattern, or OCP, which includes neutral blacks and browns that UCP was missing, and which makes OCP much more effective. According to U.S. Army Reservist Nick Smith, quote, it was a camouflage pattern that was intended to be universal, but ended up being subpar in most environments, causing the Army to move to a new camouflage pattern not drastically different from the one the UCP replaced. Not only was the pattern subpar, the uniforms tended to fade and have poor stitching, including a notoriously weak crotch seam. The cost of this nine-year disaster? Five billion dollars, not including the cost of the uniforms themselves. According to former Army infantryman Joe Carl, quote, The only universal thing about it was that it was universally disliked. He was deployed to Afghanistan in a brown pattern known as multicam, but, quote, When we returned from Afghanistan, they made us go back to UCP. It was literally one of the most disappointing things. I kept several copies of my multicam uniforms when I got out. I kept none of the UCP. In a related move, the Navy got rid of its even more ridiculous blueberry camouflage, which is low-resolution digital camouflage, except a blue color that doesn't blend in with anything. And these are the people in charge of defending us from invaders. Try not to think of that as you're going to sleep tonight. We live in a world where light bulbs connect to the internet, and recent attacks on them prove that your online security is under threat like never before. Not only your websites, but the internet-enabled devices you buy. And the biggest problem is weak passwords. That's why you need LastPass. LastPass allows you to randomly generate strong, unique passwords on the web and on your internet-enabled devices, all protected by one master password. LastPass sets up in minutes and gives you secure automatic logins throughout the web, synchronizing across all your browsers, all your computers, and even your mobile devices, at home, at work, or on the road. It even securely stores sensitive form data, including credit card numbers, backup sensitive documents, software licenses, Wi-Fi logins, and more. And with LastPass Premium, you can get these benefits on other applications, manage passwords for your entire family, and also get priority customer support. Sign up at password.bogosity.tv for a free month of LastPass Premium. Log in securely everywhere using the last password you'll ever have to remember. Go to password.bogosity.tv and get LastPass now. And now it's time to merchandise this week's Biggest Bogani Emitter. More encryption bogosity from the DOJ, this time backed up by their good buddies at the New York Times, who they can always rely on for crony journalism. For years, the insane narrative has been that the DOJ and other law enforcement departments have just been wanting to have a serious adult conversation about encryption, but the tech industry and cybersecurity experts just won't even consider it. The reality has been the exact opposite, of course, with numerous attempts to bring together law enforcement and cryptographers, and in every case it's been law enforcement screaming, NO! OUR WAY! OUR WAY! Even when their way flies in the face of basic mathematics. There's also the narrative fostered by the news media that tech companies are sheltering child abusers and terrorists, when really it's the exact opposite. One prominent example, ever since the Fed shut down Backpage, We've heard from all sorts of Leos and prosecutors about what a help they were in catching criminals, and now their efforts have actually been stifled. Tech companies have actually been very good about working with law enforcement to catch criminals. Not that you'd ever know that from reading the New York Times. In fact, even when you do have tech companies helping law enforcement, somehow that still means that tech companies just don't care. They wrote, but police records and emails, as well as interviews with nearly three dozen local, state, and federal law enforcement officials, show that some tech companies still fall short. It can take weeks or months for them to respond to questions from the authorities, if they respond at all. Sometimes they respond only to say that they have no records, even for reports they initiated. Uh-huh. And how does that compare to the DOJ responding to FOIA requests? 
you know, ones they are legally required to comply with? Quote, and when tech companies cooperate fully, encryption and anonymization can create digital hiding places for perpetrators. Facebook announced in March plans to encrypt Messenger, which last year was responsible for nearly 12 million of the 18.4 million worldwide reports of child sexual abuse material, according to people familiar with the reports. Sound familiar? It was precisely the same rhetoric used to pass FOSTA and SESTA. You point out some truly horrific criminals doing truly horrific things like sex trafficking and child porn, and then blame the platforms even if they've helped law enforcement over and over again. Of course, if someone violates their privacy to point out criminal acts that they've done, they have to go after not only the person who leaked the data, but the journalist who told the world about it. The actual criminals seem to go unpunished. Funny. And then there's the way they're not investigating Jeffrey Epstein's crimes and allegations. It's really hard to take them seriously about how much they care about child crimes while that's the case. But no, encryption is the evil boogeyman. Quote, Increasingly, criminals are using advanced technologies like encryption to stay ahead of the police. Did you spot the use of the phrase advanced technologies? Encryption is not advanced technology. It's well understood math. Most people are driving cars that represent more recent technology than encryption. And given all that, it's actually shameful how little we encrypt given the dangers involved in not doing so. But leave it to the New York Times to twist things exactly the wrong way. Quote, Offenders can cover their tracks by connecting to virtual private networks, which mask their locations, deploying encryption techniques, which can hide their messages and make their hard drives impenetrable, and posting on the dark web, which is inaccessible to conventional browsers. Actually, it's not. You can access it with freely available extensions or SOX proxies. But as we've pointed out over and over again, yes, Encryption can be used to hide criminal activity, but the criminals are going to use this advanced technology in unconventional browsers anyway. The source code is out there. The cat's already out of the bag. The question is, what are the rest of us going to be allowed to use? This is what they deliberately keep ignoring, how encryption is crucial in protecting you and me from bad guys who would steal our money, fake our identities, spy on us, and even, in the modern age of IoT devices, cause physical harm to us. And also, what about things that technically aren't encryption, like compression algorithms that the FBI doesn't know about? Or for that matter, what about an obscure language? The U.S. government successfully used Navajo to communicate securely in World War II, so they know about the concept. What if the terrorists hire a few Bushmen from an obscure tribe to communicate for them? This supposed trade-off between secure communications and law enforcement does not exist. What they are demanding is complete insanity, a ban on math that no one can ever hope to comply with and which won't stop the criminals anyway. Of course, it should come as no surprise that the major source, if not the only source for the information in that article, is the DOJ. Two enemies of the people, A.G. William Barr and FBI Director Chris Way, have created a symposium, which is simply a one-sided group of speakers bent on slandering encryption. You can even tell it from its title. Lawless Spaces, Warrant Proof Encryption, and Its Impact on Child Exploitation Cases. There's another one. Warrant Proof Encryption. What would non-warrant-proof encryption look like? What universal mathematical algorithm can you come up with that only works when someone has a warrant? What math could possibly make 2 plus 2 equal 4 when you have a warrant, and 5 when you don't? The speakers are a veritable who's who of encryption enemies. In addition to Barr and Ray, there's Deputy AG Jeffrey Rosen, Australia's Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton, who said that their laws should trump math, and that anyone who works on encryption should be blamed for any illegal activity it's used for, and UK Home Secretary Puri Patel, who said that the purpose of encryption is to empower criminals. There isn't a single cryptographer or cybersecurity expert on the panel. There also doesn't seem to be anyone who knows anything about good old-fashioned police work, from back when there were no digital communications to snoop on in the first place. Every era has always had people finding ways to hide what they were doing from law enforcement. Detectives have always had to work around that. Oh, but it's the tech industry that's the problem. Barr said, quote, 
Obviously, the department would like to engage with the private sector in exploring solutions that will provide lawful access. While we remain open to a cooperative approach, the time to achieve that may be limited. Key countries, including important allies, have been moving towards legislative and regulatory solutions. I think it is prudent to anticipate that a major incident may well occur at any time that will galvanize public opinion on these issues. Oh, that's kind of disturbing. Is this a prelude to a manufactured incident? Some kind of digital false flag? Let's keep watching. In the meantime, just know you can't trust a word the DOJ says, and you can't trust the New York Times to report it honestly, which is why they're both this week's biggest bogan emitter. Do you have children? Or nieces or nephews? Are you homeschooling? Or just want to counter some of the socialist indoctrination most children get in school? If so, go to bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins and you'll be taken to a website where you can get some great books for elementary age children. The Tuttle Twins books are books about liberty and free market economics that include children's versions of Bastiat's The Law, Leonard Reed's I Pencil, and Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, as well as books about the Federal Reserve and how regulations protect business cronies. They'll learn about the harm caused by eminent domain or regulations passed in the name of safety and fundamental concepts of liberty. And as you can see from the sample pages on the website, they're all easy to read and nicely illustrated. They're just $9.99 a piece, or get a special discount as well as free bonuses when you purchase all five. You can even buy in bulk to donate to schools and local libraries. So get the Tuttle Twins books at bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins. And now let's dulcify this week's Idiot Extraordinary! And this week it goes to Nancy Pelosi, who's actually beginning impeachment proceedings against Donald Trump. There are so many ways why this is dumb. Like when she said, quote, The actions to date by the president have seriously violated the Constitution. Oh, and you've just been the bastion of constitutional small government, haven't you? You haven't proposed or voted for anything that isn't authorized in Article 1, Section 8, or prohibited by the 1st, 2nd, 4th, 5th, 6th, ninth, or 10th Amendments, have you? Glass houses, Nancy. So these proceedings are about allegations that Trump has been colluding with Ukraine to sabotage the presidential aspirations of Joe Biden. So after three years of telling us he's in bed with Russia, now he's in bed with Ukraine, their sworn enemy. So apparently Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani have asked Ukraine to investigate Ukrainian energy company Burisma Group for corruption, according to a whistleblower. So now apparently they like whistleblowers. Burisma and its owner have been under investigation by Ukrainian prosecutors since 2012 for money laundering, tax evasion, and corruption. American involvement in the investigation actually began under Obama when his administration became concerned that Burisma wasn't being properly investigated and that investigators were protecting political cronies. So what does all this have to do with Joe Biden? His son, Hunter, has been on the board of Burisma since 2014 and only stepped down a month or two ago. So, according to Pelosi, that means that Trump should be impeached because, quote, The president has admitted to asking the president of Ukraine to take actions which would benefit him politically. Oh, so that's it? The investigation would benefit him politically? So if it didn't benefit him politically, and he did the exact same thing anyway, that would be all right? How does that work? I think Pelosi hasn't thought things through. If Trump is impeached and the Senate throws him out of office, Pence becomes president. Is that really what we want? Besides, according to the Constitution, impeachment is only to be used in cases of treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. You'd think such a good steward of the Constitution like Pelosi would know that. But of course, the dumbest thing about this is that it's just going to hand the 2020 election to Trump. There's no way this doesn't backfire. But hey, does that mean the Democrats are now behind the Constitution? Their rhetoric has turned that way. So maybe now they'll reverse their stance on gun control, banning of encryption, censorship of social media, regulation of internet access, red flag laws, the war on drugs, Medicare for all and other Tenth Amendment violations, and they'll pardon Julian Assange, Ross Ulbricht, and Edward Snowden. I can totally hold my breath for all of that, right? 
Meantime, I can at least name Nancy Pelosi this week's Idiot Extraordinaire. Well, that wraps up this Fly to Fancy on a Windswept Field edition of the Bogosity Podcast. Come to discord.bogosity.tv where you can join the discussion and post a question, statement, news article, or a rant. This podcast depends on you to keep going, so please go to donate.bogosity.tv where you can give using PayPal or crypto, or subscribe at Patreon or Subscribestar to get the podcast and YouTube videos early and ad-free. You can even support this podcast for free with the airtime extension. Thank you for listening. Until next time, here's a quote from William O. Douglas. The Constitution was designed to keep government off the backs of the people. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. You can now get two free audiobook downloads and a 30-day free trial at audible.bogosity.tv, your choice from the world's largest selection of over 180,000 digital audiobooks and spoken word content for your iOS or Android device, Kindle, or MP3 player. Go to audible.bogosity.tv now.